Pecker Blue woke up and didn't hear anything, so he got up and went looking for the Good Samaritan. He walked into the kitchen where he heard the Good Samaritan on the phone saying, That will be great. See you at noon and thank you so much. When the Good Samaritan turned around, they noticed Pecker Blue there and wished him a good morning. Pecker Blue returned the greeting and stated he didn't want to intrude on the Good Samaritan any longer, so he would get ready to set out on his mission. The Good Samaritan told him there was no rush and that they actually called a friend to come over for lunch, that they really wanted Pecker Blue to meet. Pecker really wanted to start looking for his family, but he couldn't just walk out after everything the Good Samaritan had done for him. What were a couple more hours? The Good Samaritan explained that they really called their friend over to meet with Pecker before he went out into the world on his own. It wasn't going to be the same for him now that he was exposed and not covered up. He wouldn't have his man to keep him protected, and the Good Samaritan thought the friend could give Pecker some good advice before he left. At precisely noon, there was a knock at the door, and the Good Samaritan introduced Pecker Blue to Mr. Picture. Pecker took one look at Mr. Picture and was silenced with shock. He was taller than Pecker, but not even close to the Good Samaritan's height. He was a camera, and it shocked Pecker, but then he realized he was a penis on a tripod and started to laugh. (laughs) Mr. Picture and the Good Samaritan looked at each other confused. Pecker stated that he must have been stuck in the confines of boxer briefs for too long. He never imagined in all his life that he would be sitting here meeting a camera. Mr. Picture and the Good Samaritan both started laughing because it was absurd when you really thought about it, but these days anything was possible. The Good Samaritan stated it was a beautiful day and that they should head out to the yard and if they needed anything to just holler. They started the conversation with small talk and it finally segued into Mr. Picture explaining that when he was with his original owner, it started off great. They would go to the park, take beautiful pictures, but one day that ended and his owner wouldn't leave the house. Then Mr. Picture was only taking pictures of his owner's penis. Mr. Picture shuddered at the memory. He thought he was trapped living out the rest of his life taking dick pics. Not how a sophisticated camera such as himself thought things would go. After three years, his owner died, and Mr. Picture was placed in a box by some distant relative who didn't want anything to do with his owner or Mr. Picture. He ended up at a flea market, another low point in his life, but he was purchased by a lovely young lady who had hoped to fix him up to take pictures. But Mr. Picture's days of collecting memories for others was over, and he was petrified he would be subjected to another home where he would have to take dick pics. Realizing what he said and that it was the second time he said it, Mr. Picture apologized to Pecker. It wasn't the dick's fault. It was the brain that controlled his owner. Pecker wasn't offended at all. He actually thought the term dick pics was funny, even though he did not want to ever be caught with his man's pants down and a camera snapping a picture of him. Mr. Picture continued and explained to Pecker he needed to make his own memories. So the lovely young lady who purchased him told Mr. Picture she would make him a body out of found objects, just like the artwork she created, and then he could have a life of his own and make his own memories. Mr. Picture does admit that he doesn't know what it feels like to be an actual body part, so some of his experiences won't compare to what Pecker Blue may go through. They talk some more about Mr. Picture's life and experiences, and how what his first owner had done made him feel cheap, and this was long before the internet and cellular phones. Pecker looked at Mr. Picture confused, as he's never known a time with no internet or cellular phones. He remembers all those times before his man ever had a woman come over to comfort himself, Pecker Blue, and his two best friends. Those were the times where his man was a bit awkward and would put his computer on, and Pecker would hear silly chit-chat and then music that sounded something like bow chicka wow wow Pecker never liked the music, but something about what was happening on the computer screen must have triggered his man because he would start to feel a little twitch at first, and then his two best friends would start to become more alert and complain that he no longer fit in their flesh. It always ended with them enjoying themselves and bonding, but Pecker preferred when his man would have a woman come over to comfort them. Being comforted by the hand left Pecker chafed a few times, so he didn't care for it too much, but it did the trick on many mornings when they woke up alone. Realizing he drifted off in his memories, Pecker asked Mr. Picture where he was from that they didn't have internet or cellular phones. Mr. Picture explained that he was a vintage camera, which meant that Mr. Picture was around for a very long time, 
It was actually made way before his man was born, even before his man's parents. Mr. Picture and Pecker took a walk through the yard and spoke some more. Mr. Picture was very smart and worldly. At times it made Pecker uncomfortable, not because Mr. Picture was rude or mean. It's just that Pecker Blue was the little brain. His man's bigger brain was the smart one, apparently. Being the little brain wasn't a good thing. They caused trouble. Well, that was what Pecker remembered hearing a few times when his man's lady friends would yell at him before they walked out and slammed the door. He was the wrong brain, the little brain, that his man was thinking with. Talking with Mr. Picture, he did feel like he was the wrong brain. But he had other qualities that seemed to always smooth things over when those lady friends would come back a few days later, some even hours. That thought made Pecker Blue smile. Mr. Picture told Pecker that he may come across others like them in his travels, and he may come across some that don't approve of them. But Pecker should always remember to be strong and keep his backbone up so he stood tall and never let anyone tell you that you can't do something or try to stop you from doing what you want or need to do. Mr. Picture let Pecker take a close look at his parts and answered a few more questions for Pecker before wishing him well and then heading in to find his friend to say goodbye. Pecker waited a few moments so Mr. Picture could say goodbye to his friend before heading back in to find the Good Samaritan and also say his goodbyes. He was ready to start his mission. Now is the time to take life by the balls. The Good Samaritan told Pecker they were sad to see him go, but understood he needed to find his family. They discussed Pecker Blue's plan, and once it was decided that Pecker should start from where he was found, the Good Samaritan offered to drive him there, and they headed to the dumpster. Pecker Blue couldn't believe he was happy to be heading to a dumpster again. He remembered the first time he was heading to a dumpster, but that was completely different. His man took them out dancing, and that woman started rubbing up against Pecker Blue and his two best friends. Next thing Pecker knew, they were behind a dumpster, behind the club, and Pecker was putting on a raincoat. He recalled how he felt that night and was pretty sure this dumpster visit was not going to end the same way. Hopefully this visit still have a happy ending, though. Once they arrived, Pecker took a deep breath and looked out the window at the surroundings. The Good Samaritan asked Pecker if he was sure he wanted to do this. They had discussed waiting a few days when the Good Samaritan would be back from their business trip, but Pecker just couldn't wait any longer. He needed to get out there and find his family. He was sure they were worried about him and missing him. His two best friends have never gone this long without him, and his man would always comfort him, hold him, and rub his head before they would fall asleep. This had to be just as hard for them as it was for him. Now was the time. The Good Samaritan made Pecker promise to call them if he needed anything and to keep them updated on his progress. With one last goodbye, the Good Samaritan opened the door and Pecker Blue climbed out. Pecker watched as the Good Samaritan's car drove away, and once he couldn't see them, he turned to the dumpster. He wasn't really sure what he expected to find there, but climbed in, hoping for a miracle. Dear sunshine, I want to 